Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares, and it's Saturday, Slashback Saturday, the sequel. This is a segment created by my good buddy, Joe the Horror Man, where he picks a theme, and we watch a slasher movie based on that theme, and do a short review. This week, it's Returns. Now, it could have return in the title, it could be a killer returning to slash more victims, or just a person returning to some place they had been before. This week, I picked... Bloodhook. Now this movie, actually, I do believe, has been done one time before by my good buddy Nick, uh, The Last Shoegazer. Um, I don't think this video is still available to watch, I don't think. But anyway... Uh, Bloodhook is a 1986 film, which runs approximately 92 minutes. That's for the theatrical cut. The director's cut, which this is, this is the Vinegar Syndrome um, director's cut, it runs 111 minutes, and that is a long, long slasher. Now, this is directed by Jim Mallon. He also goes by James, and he was responsible for the Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. He also did a bunch of episodes. Now, this stars Mark Jacobs as Peter Van Cleef. He was in Touch and Go. He had a bit part in Goodfellas. And he was also in Biloxi Blues. This also stars Lisa Jane Todd as Anne. She was in Playback. And White Boys, with a Z. Patrick Dans as Rodney. He was in nothing. <laughs> and Sarah Holsker as Kirsten. Actually spelled the same way my daughter spells her name. She was actually also in nothing. Now this had a budget of $200,000. And some interesting things about the film. The community of Hayward, Wisconsin is an actual community. And the giant muskie featured in the film is a local landmark. This was shot in six weeks. Most of the crew came from public television, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, the giant fishing lure in the film was made from styrofoam, and the hooks were made from nylon. And the film's Spanish title is, and I'm going to try to try to say this, Carnada, which means bait. Now, of course, this is the Vinegar Syndrome. Um, like I said, the director's cut. This is the alternate artwork, which is really, really cool, I think. Um, but I'm a bit of a purist, so I like the original artwork. It's kind of silly and cartoonish, but I like it. Uh, this has a very... Ooh, this has a very... A simple plot, but it is crazy because I can't give a lot of it away because it's just nuts. Okay, uh, Peter Van Cleese returns to his town where he grew up. Um, they do show a flashback of his grandfather disappearing. Um, after 17 years, he comes back to kind of claim the um, it's like a summer house, a fishing shack, but it's not really a shack. It's really a nice house. So he returns, and once he returns, people start getting picked off by a crazed fisherman with a giant hook and lure. And yes, it is cra it's as crazy as it sounds. This is considered a horror comedy, um... And there are several moments where I laugh out loud. Uh, but this has a very interesting backstory with me. And I'll tell that because I really can't say much about the plot without giving away key plot points. This has probably the craziest motive and backstory for any slasher I've ever seen. 
and I can't tell you what it is. And it's actually killing me that I can't tell you. But anyone who's seen it, I'm sure you'll agree this has a completely crazy backstory. But anyway, uh, my little story with this one, I rented this probably four years ago. It was when Netflix still had DVDs that they sent in the mail. I'm not sure if they still do, but I used to subscribe to that, and I would get all kinds of slasher movies and test them out before I bought them. This happened to be one of them. Now, the one I had was before um, Vinegar Syndrome put out their uh, director's cut. And I do believe it was the 92-minute cut. I was completely bored with this movie. Um, I do realize now that this is also a trauma movie, and you kind of have to be in the mood for a trauma movie in order to enjoy it, at least from my point of view. And I wasn't. I wasn't in the mood for it. I actually fell asleep in it. So, I got the basic gist of what happened, although the backstory of the killer I didn't really get because, like I said, I'd fallen asleep. Well, my cousin was living with me at the time, and he actually wanted to see this. My cousin doesn't really like horror, but he just thought that... I think he read the synopsis on the... Um, Netflix card that came with it. So I watched it with him. Stayed awake this time. And he and I just laughed hysterically throughout the entire movie. And I liked it. <laughs> uh, I guess I was in the mood for it the second time. I really wasn't in the mood for it the first time. So, yeah. I actually really enjoyed it the second time. I enjoyed watching it with a friend. And we both... Like I said, laughed hysterically at half the movie. Now, when I was at Monster Mania two years ago, um, they had this. This is when this had first come out, I do believe. And I picked it up. They had it with the slipcover and without. And like a dummy, I picked it up without the slipcover. Because I liked the original artwork. And I thought that the slipcover would cover that. And, yeah. Well, the slipcover is going for quite a bit of money now. So that was my uh, stupid... Um, yeah, I did that. It, it was pretty dumb. But I still do have the film, and I do love it. It is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Don't really know what else to say to this one. But definitely check out Joe to see what he picked and what our theme is for next week. For Slashback, the sequel. And if you like what you see in here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.